All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Living Better podcast. And today we have an interesting guest. We're with Katie Romayolo. No, Roman Yolo. Roman Yolo. There you go. I got it. And <laughs> she is a mindset and performance coach. So we're going to have a lot of uh, interesting subject today. We're going to talk about self sabotaging. Um, your mindset in terms of overthinking. performance, overthinking, anxiety. We're going to dig into all of that. And we're going to see how Katie helped clients and how she works with people and to bring them to a better state. Mm-hmm. To, uh, to be able yeah, to perform to be, better, to right? To perform better and to uh, have breakthroughs when sometimes, well, a lot of times our mindset is guilty of holding us back. So mm-hmm. thanks a lot for being yes, on this podcast, you. Katie. This is so awesome that you're dedicating some of your personal time to do this with us today. And we want to bring more awareness to people in terms of different services and different people they can reach out to when they struggle in life with mm-hmm. various issues. Mm-hmm. So we're really excited to have you on the podcast. Yes. Thank you so much. I just love what you guys are doing. So congratulations for this. Thank you're doing you. Awesome. Thank you very much. So let's start and uh, absolutely talk about yourself, your journey, and what made you want to go down this field to, of helping others. Yeah. Yeah. I often say I came into this work by accident. Wow. Because I, I really never set out in life initially to uh, be a mindset coach. Never in a million years, not even five years ago, would I have thought that I could be on camera with somebody right now, actually speaking to people. I had suffered with a debilitating amount of extreme anxiety. Uh, For a long time, I thought I had social anxiety. I could barely look at myself in a mirror. It was, uh, oh, that's okay. Because you know what? It's really made me who I am. I can appreciate how hard it is for some people to really work past that. And it allows passion in my work now. Oh, hundred percent. Wow. I'm really grateful from where I've come to, and it allows for uh, my clients also to see that results are possible in so many different ways. So mm-hmm. I, um, I started out, I, I've been in my business here coaching for about two years now, and previous to that, I was a real estate agent. Okay. I started a lot of advocacy work within mental health for real estate agents, because it's really tough being self-employed. and so Oh, yeah. A lot of oh. stuff comes up. Can't imagine. But- Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I I had started there. I was an agent for about um, eight, nine years at the time. And what happened was in uh, 2017, I found myself with an opportunity to attend a real estate conference, which at the time made a lot of sense to do. I was a top producer. I was doing well in my field. But what people didn't realize is I was a mess inside. Mm -hmm. I was showing up to work, pretending to be confident by just, you know, faking it till you make it. But I wasn't making it. At some point I was expecting that something was going to give. And all of a sudden I'd feel like, Hey, I am not nervous talking to clients anymore. I can show up, I can do things, but that switch was never flipping for me almost 10 years in the business. So I had an opportunity. I was working on a team that was a very structured position where I had a lot of job security in a lot of senses. I wasn't a hundred percent self-employed at that point because I had leads that were being given to me. I had clients that were being given to me to work with. And that meant I didn't have to really put myself out there and do the hard calls, the prospecting stuff, right? The stuff that introverts tend to avoid because it's really super tough. And uh, so this opportunity comes up and it was an, an all expenses paid thing for three days to go to this phenomenal networking event and uh, and I calls and I was coming up with every single opportunity to get out of it. Like every excuse I could think of. Really? Yeah. It was like, well, I'm too busy. I can't afford it. Oh wait, it's paid for. How? how Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Everything I could think of, Mm -hmm. but I just wasn't getting away with it this time. And I call that at this point, synchronicity, like Mm -hmm. the times when you're being forced into something that is really uncomfortable is really for a reason. 100%. I ended up going to the conference. I felt like a mess inside. I was trying to pretend that I was sitting there okay. I didn't know how to network. I I just really had a million negative thoughts going on in my mind. And I went to a breakout session where it was a smaller group to do a training on uh, more of the unconscious mind, which I thought was really interesting that it would be at a real estate conference about networking. But I went, it was intriguing. 
And I ended up signing up for the workshop, signing up for the course, signing up for being a practitioner. And shortly after that, I had fast tracked through uh, becoming an NLP master practitioner, master uh, hypnotist and quantum change process practitioner, you name it. There's a whole bunch of things that came along with it. Wow. That, yeah, I initially really did for me because I was struggling so much with anxiety. I figured mm -hmm. this will help me in my business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I just took that first little breadcrumb that dropped in front of me that day in an uncomfortable moment. Wow. Well, good for you. Yeah. And it's interesting that you're saying that because I think that in your field and we interviewed different people, not, not exactly doing what you do, but doing other things. And before you help others, you got to be able to help yourself. yourself. Otherwise, how do you want to have that credibility how, if you haven't dealt with your own demons, which in your case, that, that was the reason you went on this journey. So I think that's a very strong start point to go from. Mm -hmm. And okay, so let's go from here. So you got on this journey. Yep. Now you're a real estate agent. You're interested more and more into all those different um, practices like NLP and people that don't know that's neuro linguistic programming. So it's just one of the techniques that you can use in helping people dealing with their unconscious mind and everything that they're going on. Uh, yeah. Well, that's going on inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. So you mix all those services, your real estate, like you were for, you work for, uh, you were working for what Remax at the time, I believe. Uh, so I was century 21 at the time before okay. I actually left on my own. Yeah. Okay, so how did you make the jump uh, to owning your own practice and becoming a mindset coach? Yeah, yeah. so it was uh, terrifying at first, quite honestly. I went through all of the scale of emotions and the biggest thing that helped me was having support around me. So I don't mean necessarily like my family was, you know, amazing supportive and, you know, pushing me to do this. They were somewhat quite the opposite because they're worried yeah. about, you know, risk and what are you of doing? Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They were scared for you because they, they care scared. and they love you, you know? Yes. Yeah. And you know, that was, is usually what comes up first with the people you love. When you share yes. your dreams and your goals, the, the fear comes out for you first and it's mm -hmm. through love, but it, yes. it doesn't help. <laughs> no. Yeah, absolutely. There was that quote from Neil Stress, and he says, if you want to be successful in life, don't listen to your family and friends. Oh. And I thought that was a great <laughs> quote. <laughs> I thought it was a great quote because they're the one who will usually go the safer route and hold yes, you back. Exactly. Safer yeah, route. Exactly. The safer yeah. route. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Because it comes from their experience, right? Mm -hmm. And how can they live your dreams for you? They can't. They can't nope. see the vision. They don't feel your passion, so they don't get it. Mm -hmm. no. And, you know, that's okay. It's where they are. But the key really was to find people that were distant enough in a sense of not those close, close family and uh, close enough that they cared about my, me and, you know, sense of a friend and surrounded myself with people that really had big goal dreams, right? Like, so other people that really had wanted to look into more mindset practices who were meditating, who were taking risks and, you know, doing them with coaching support and just really putting myself in that field. Yeah. And I was so fortunate. I really believe that when you start asking for what you need, whether that's intentionally through, you know, literally going out and resourcing things, or if it's through your thoughts, right? If you're yeah. saying, I really need something to give right now. I really need some support in this. I've got a great idea, but what is next, right? Mm -hmm. If you start to put out those questions within yourself, mm -hmm. you're drawing in answers. Like this works beautifully every mm -hmm. single time for me in my life. And I started drawing in answers to the questions I didn't realize were there. So, you know, I had a coach that just seemed to fall out of the sky one day that I connected with that just seemed to be living a parallel life to mine, wow. but 10 years ahead. Okay. So they hadn't seen the success. They were in the seven figures of income where wow. I was <laughs> jump out of six, right? Like yes. they were way above where I thought I could be. Unreal. But it gave me this glimpse of, hey, I was you 10 years ago. And I'm on your path for a reason here, right? 100%. So surrounding yourself that, uh, I can't remember who said it first, but the five people that you surround yourself yeah. with, they're who you are, who you become. Hey. Yeah. yeah. I tell Mel, that my all husband the time. tells me that all the time. <laughs> I'm on a similar yeah. journey as he, you. He so. is. He yeah. is. So I, it's very interesting for me. I like all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, you're right. So, um, okay. So you surround yourself with people. How did you network into finding these people? How did you get the courage to go out there and be like, Hey, 
and also <laughs> like specifying yeah. in mindset performance like isn't i'm obviously there's life coaching life coach and performance is obviously very uh right yeah so how did you really specify like go specifically into that field you, you yeah, can start so, with one question at a time. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We're I got all them excited. All. We're there. <laughs> so, so much to you. Okay. Let's start with, yeah. How yeah. did you network with the people? Uh, how did you find that mentor that I think it's a great idea if when you find mentors that can lead you yeah. to where you want to be? Um, yeah. Yeah. For, first step was questions. So when I was a very, very nervous person to talk to other people, I didn't realize that the golden ticket was just to ask questions questions, right? Oh, yeah. So a lot of business people will teach you or unintentionally maybe teach you that when you show up to try and network or to grow your business or your idea, it's not about telling people what you have or what you do or what you want or giving your resume. It really isn't. And it's because people really will tune out quite quickly when it's not to do with them. Right. And it's just yeah. a natural yeah. instinct. We, we tend yeah. to gravitate to what, what is about me, right? Yeah. Why do I care? And but why can you explain to me why people are like that? I drives me crazy. <laughs> well, I think it honestly is very primitive biological, um, that has carried forth through our genes. So it has evolved and we've become different in the way that we utilize that. But I think fundamentally way back somewhere, it yeah. was self-preservation, right? So okay. why do I need this? Okay. Well, I need it for food or shelter or safety. And that's where that initial gut instinct comes from to grab onto what's important for you first true right so society's kind of driven that away to say well that's selfish well it depends on the context of how you're showing up is it continually only about what is in it for me well then that's not what really anybody wants right and you'll feel that in your energy absolutely but, uh, yeah so asking questions so if there's anything that you pull away from this particular podcast episode here and you're an introvert out there and you're trying to start your business or you know you're having struggles with talking to people remember to just ask questions and it doesn't have to be anything special it doesn't have to be complex so someone's standing in front of you and to get you know that rapport going and just that looseness and that comfort zone mm -hmm. you know what do you do instead of saying oh i'm a da 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 right whatever it is that you've been programmed or have been teaching yourself so to, to do to say day. yes yeah drop that drop okay. that mask and ask them what do you do why do you do that Very do you have any family you'll be surprised how much people want to tell you about oh, themselves yeah. oh, oh for sure yeah yeah i agree yeah. absolutely yeah and it's it's building that bridge first right you need mm -hmm. to have that rapport with people first before mm -hmm. they can hear anything that you're doing about you it just it tends to pass right through and doesn't sink in unless you've got that rapport built. Mm -hmm. So for finding these people, you Google them, like what did you do? You went to a seminar, you went to a workshop, you just found them out of nowhere. I call this the magic. So this was hard to accept probably for somebody at first that hasn't had concrete proof that this works, but I'm telling you that you do not need to make this as hard as it's made out to be in real life. It's not about Googling. It's not about sitting there for hours on end, going through the phone book and, mm -hmm. you know, doing the cold calls. It's not about that at all. I wouldn't be here if that's what it was because that's not who I am. Okay. And what I did instead was I followed the breadcrumbs. So I use this all the time in my work. What is showing up first? The tiniest little thing that feels like, whoo, that was exciting for a moment. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was interesting for a second. And then we tend to, you know, wash those thoughts away with whatever has to be done in the day. But what is the first little thing that comes up? So maybe it's you're driving in your car and a song that comes on that has to do with, I don't know, McDonald's. Okay. We're going to go really generic here. So yeah. say a song that comes on reminds you for whatever reason about McDonald's and say you actually really want a job at McDonald's. It's been your lifelong dream, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then okay, there's your number one first signal. Okay, you're thinking about McDonald's. Follow that thought a little bit more. What is it that you're thinking about in that song that kind of lit your fire a bit? And it's hard to say what will happen next, but trust me, another breadcrumb will show up. Mm -hmm. You just gotta get good at looking at the little tiny things that pop in your path and they lead to massive. So do you want an example of how this worked? Yes, sure, yeah. yes of course. Yeah. Okay, so I um, about a year and a half ago where I was just really getting into doing big speaking engagements, doing a lot more of the bigger platform things. And 
it had honestly never been on my mind at any point since maybe my childhood to be a writer. I hadn't thought about it. I had loved creative writing in school. It was a passion, but never really had that lifelong, you know, yearning for to, to be an author. And so what happened was I'm kind of moving along and business is starting to pick up and I've got these opportunities. And all of a sudden I see a Facebook post this one day and it was from an acquaintance through an acquaintance that I just kind of happened to meet one time. And it was the title that grabbed me. And it was a opportunity to write a chapter in a co-authored book that was called She's No Longer Silent. Wow. Now, I had no idea what it was about. I hadn't seen any of the previous posts or anything that they were putting together. Um, it was a publisher that I was not aware of at the time. And the title grabbed me. And it was synchronicity at the time for me because I was just working through a big breakthrough in my personal life and my family life about speaking up on fast family, uh, past family traumas, okay. right? So the theme was kind of, it was, it was the theme of my life at the moment. And I, it allowed me to have that feeling first. And then, so I just reached out and did a quick message, right? Hey, what is this about? That led to, hey, let's jump on a call. Okay, yes. the key is to say yes, right? <laughs> when yes. something pops up. And it might be scary. You might be nervous, but it's okay to be nervous. Yes, I agree. Totally okay to be nervous. Nobody's going to totally figure it out in the end. Mm -hmm. So that led to um, just being published recently. This book took about a year and a half to get out with everybody that was involved. I had the chapter completed, but what it led to was a solo book of my own that was the most wow rewarding, just hugely propelling option in my business. And, um, I never thought I would be a, a complete hundred percent solo artist of a, oh. a day, but, uh, that happened all in the same context. And it filled so many different things about, uh, where I was trying to go next in my career lined up because I said yes to the co-author book. Yes to the solo book. And, uh, it's just picking up the little yeses. Yeah. I agree. Congratulations. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. amazing. Good for you. So you have a co-author book, mm -hmm. which is called um, Breaking the Silence, or She's No Longer Silent. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> My bad. Yeah. Yes. And you have your own book. What is your own book about? Can you tell us more about what you wrote? Yeah. So uh, the, the second one that is coming out for October 31st launch date is called Home of the Soul. Wow. And it is a true story. It's kind of like a memoir, but really spectacular. So I share things that are so unbelievably strange that have happened in my life that have led to really big things that were condensed as repressed memories, um, really synchronistic major like miracle moments that happened in life. I condense it all into a memoir type recollection. There's some um, like a transcribed um, regression that's there of a past life therapy session I had personally. It's just a phenomenal tale of how I got to where I am right now while being extremely in hard times, while having the most unbelievable challenges pop up several years back in my life. And it, it walks the reader through that. Mm, okay. Amazing. And if we talk about that a bit without giving the book away, obviously, um, being on a journey that you are Obviously, I know myself, it's usually when you go through a lot of traumas yourself because you want to help others after you overcome your issues. Yeah, yeah. So what if, if I may ask, what was your, like, your issues that led you to this journey or what was your biggest struggles? Mm, good question. So in your life. I, uh, I grew up in a really, really rough neighborhood. I good. went to one of the worst rated high schools in Calgary, Alberta. And it was a really hard place to be as a teenager. I was coming from a home setting that was very, very strict, very religious. And it was really much so like a dictatorship where there was a lot of fear-based um, compliance, right? Like that's how the household was ruled. So I get into this new high school and very, very quickly you had to decide which kind of group you were going to be a part of. It wasn't as much like the clicks that regularly happen, you kind of get segregated, unfortunately, into you know little groups of friends. It was bigger than that. There was gang activity there, a lot of violence, a lot of drug abuse, um, just a lot of bad things going on. 
And I had um, an experience one day where I came back from a uh, weekend where I was trying to stay low off the radar. My strategy was avoidance at, at that point in my life. Try and avoid so that you can get out of high school without um, ending up an addict, without ending up dead, without ending up in wow. prison. That was wow. the reality of a lot of people I went to wow. school with. And, um, you know, I was doing that, but in the process, I didn't realize that I was anchoring into my unconscious that you avoid, 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 avoid. And that's the way to survive. Yes. So I showed up on a Monday morning and um, there was a, a young man that I had gone to school with in previous years who was killed um, during oh. that weekend. And uh, the rumor was he was... Um, he was left on the side of the road. Uh, he was killed after an altercation. And again, rumors were that it was this kind of opposite rival group um, to who he was hanging out with. And he had been speaking to somebody that he shouldn't have been. And you know, the whole, I don't know, I was trying not to get into the details, but I went to the funeral a few days later and um, the, we're sitting there and all of a sudden a group of girls had walked into the back of the room who then sat at the back and these girls were part of that other group that were rival group um, mm -hmm. that were referred to be, you know, allegedly responsible for this young man's death. So oh I remember God. sitting there and it was like a pin would drop, right? And you wouldn't hear it or you would hear it clearly. And I don't know really why they were there that day. They never did anything, but it felt like extreme intimidation, right? Like we're sitting here to remind you, and um, I ended up getting out of high school. That was shortly um, after I graduated. And I kind of packed up all my things and moved to Toronto and thought, I'll leave my past behind. I'll leave my hard household behind that was ruled through fear and mm -hmm. you know everything in high school. And I'll just start my life over again, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'll be who I want to be. And yes. what I didn't realize is there was so much that was anchored in, right, from my past that I packed it along with me and just took it to the next destination. It kept yeah. popping up in my life. And that was why it was very confusing because I thought, well, you know, I'm a strong person. I've been through this. I've lived on my own since I was 16. I've made it here. I've put myself yeah. through school. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's nothing I can't do attitude, but at the mm -hmm. same time, I felt like a failure. I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I was a weak person mm -hmm. for not being more extroverted in my life, more forceful in my business. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So the dots started coming forward and connecting in once I started doing some of my work with a coach and going through my practitioner trainings and really realizing that my extreme anxiety that was showing up around my work as a real estate agent was showing up because I had attached that fear and danger of my peers to the high school memories, right? The someone showing up who was a colleague or in a peer back then setting really meant danger, avoid. Mm -hmm. So of course it would be natural that my unconscious mind would then store that and it would bubble up all of a sudden when I had the opportunity to go to a conference. Well, that was terrifying because to me it meant you're going to die, right? Like in my brain, it was connecting all of the wrong things in that moment. Okay. So did you wow. reach out to a coach first to work on those issues in your real estate um, position? Mm -hmm. And then that's what led you to your own journey of having your own practice and becoming the coach that you are today? Yeah. So yes and no. I had started, first I thought my problem was that I just needed more sales skills, right? Like yeah. I just was too nervous. I needed to have that background. And so I did a lot of sales trainings. I went to um, training events where you know, you sat there in a room and you were drilled and you were taught to prospect and I did it and I felt nervous doing it the whole time, but I never got over that emotional underlayer of what was going on. I had the skill set, I could communicate, I could do it, but I never felt good after or while doing it. So the key to motivation, right, to do anything over and over again is you want to feel good. If you feel like garbage at the end of the day, you're not going to say, let's do that again tomorrow, right? It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So the emotional element was the key and there really wasn't anybody at the time that I thought could discover what was going on because I didn't know. So how do you oh, find true. what you don't know you're looking for? So true. Right? You can't. You, so don't. you don't. Follow the breadcrumbs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
So showing up at that conference, so I call this the jackhammer, right? So how many times are you willing to say, I need something, even if you don't know what it is, before you actually need something, right? It's that rock bottom. So I knew I needed a coach, but I was choosing the wrong kind of coach because I was gearing it towards making money, which really wasn't my issue. I was making good money. I just felt like I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And I ended up um, being forced to that, go to that conference, right? Is the, it was my jackhammer moment. It was that uncomfortableness that it's like, you're not willing to find what you really need here. So we are going to make you find what you need, right? We're going to put you in this situation. By we, I mean, you know, my unconscious mind, God, the universe, whatever it is that, you know, is out there holding us all together here in this experience. And uh, that, that, you know, first breadcrumb was where I went to a workshop, right? And at that workshop, I connected with a coach and the coach said to me, hey, you know, there's a lot going on here and asked me a few questions. And the questions really had nothing to do with what I thought they were going to have to do with. Wow. They really dove quickly into what are you feeling? And, um, you know, God bless them because they really knew what they were doing at the time. And I ended up in what's called a quantum change process session. Mm -hmm. And um, these sessions are, are dealing with the unconscious mind. It's a very intense, deep dive into what's happening underneath and where the block is, who's involved, and how do we actually lift what's happening there on an emotional scale. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Ama amazing. Yeah, so to make the jump to having your own practice, let's talk about the challenges. Uh, how scary was it that you quit your job altogether, started with zero income, trying mm -hmm. to build a business from the ground up, you transitioned slowly as it was building, you moved away from your current job to letting it go completely when you had a sustainable income. What's your story and your challenges you faced being an entrepreneur? So it's a great question and I'm so glad you bring it up because I really think it's the biggest thing that people kind of teeter on, right? And yes. then either never do or have to and come yes, back. Exactly. And, and it's really, I firmly believe you have to rip the bandaid off. Okay. okay. So in an educated, calculated way. So the way that that happened for me was I knew that I had a lot of experience. I knew that I knew what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I had a skill set. I just didn't have a track record yet, right? Okay. I had a quality skill that I knew was tangible, that I knew was needed. I just didn't know how to bring it to people. Okay. And then I knew that I had a very good background in systems when it comes to systematically approaching what a business does. You do this in the beginning, then you do this in the middle, and then this yep. leads to the end result. It's yes. all about leads essentially, regardless of what we're doing, right? Yep. Helping people, you still need leads yep. to do that. Yep. So when I was working uh, for Century 20, 21 at the time, I'm on this team, I'm making good money. I was making six figures at the time. So it was a very hard thing to say, hey, goodbye to, <laughs> right? Like, whoa, yeah. what's going to happen here? It was tough. And yeah. at the time, quite honestly, I had wanted to leave this team setting for probably about two years. Oh, Didn't wow. have the confidence to do it because I was terrified. And I kept having all the reasons of, I can't afford it. I'm going to need, you know, X amount of money to really make a push and have some advertising and do all the logos and all of that stuff. Right. Yeah. But it was keeping me stuck. What I really needed to do was actually say, are you willing to show up every day as you Wow. to tell people that you have had your problems, that you are willing to work on them and that you are not perfect, but that done things that have really made an, a difference in your life. Are you willing to do that? Amazing. Yeah. So, um, I ripped off the bandaid. I supported myself with people that were loving and encouraging that had a track record in business, right? Not right. maybe the same thing I was doing, but okay. they understood calculated risk. They understood business coaching and they became my friends. Oh, wow. I love me, Jordan, Okay. And then I gave my notice when I wanted to pee my pants. I was so scared. To oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will tell you, honest to God, I cried in that exit interview. Aww. I sat there and just allowed every emotion that had been building for 10 years up until that point to actually come out in front of somebody that I really respected mm -hmm. that I was terrified to let down. And I just let it out. And... Okay. They were super supportive, said, you know, you'll, you'll do it. And yep. I, I wish you the best. So 
then I was at ground zero. And from that moment, I applied everything that I knew that I would tell a client. So if somebody came to me and I was their coach and they're telling me, this is my problem. What is it that you need to do? Okay, well, I want to start a business and this is what I'm hoping to achieve in six months. Every step of the way, I always go back to what would I tell a client? Because disassociating yourself from the actual outcome is probably the best way to not have attachment to what you really need and want to happen. Because that can muddy the waters a little bit with too many emotions. Okay. And um, just every day, what would I tell a client to do? So for the first four months, I really, I had no money to start on this, right? Like I had the income that I was making, but I hadn't saved for really starting all the things I needed. And I just took a little bit at a time. The first week I knew I needed a website. Okay. So I did that. The yeah. second week I knew I needed this and just one by one by one, put the money in it. Some of it was on credit. Then I got a client would pay it off. Right. Yeah, you're little right. Bit. Exactly. Yeah. Little bits, not these huge chunks of debt, but little bits infusing money into the business. Mm -hmm. And six months later, I was back to my income. Wow. That I was making all on my own. I know. <laughs> That's crazy. Unbelievable. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it myself. Quite honestly. Yeah. It's just <laughs> Good for every, you. Day, every day showing up as who is it that you think your client is right? Like treat okay. yourself as your own client. Yeah. What yeah. do you want for them to happen? Do you want them to succeed? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, Tell them what they need to hear, and then you actually take your own advice. Because yeah. we never take our own advice. No, I find. no. Absolutely. So, so do you find that for you, what helped you make the move the most was maybe taking one little thing at a time instead of seeing the big picture and says, "I need to do this, this and that, and that, and that." And then you feel overwhelmed, and yes. nothing ever gets done because you're piling up all these huge amount of things you have to do. Pressure and yeah, stress and pressure, on you. Yeah. And but instead I think, of like, yeah. I need a logo, you make the logo. Yes. I need a website. The website. You yeah. Step by step, right? Yeah. So exactly that. At one point I had a whiteboard in my office that had all of my ideas, everything that was my brain dump, right? Everything yep. written down and all the dates I'm going to do it. And I would walk into my office every day and feel like I got to do all that. Like, mm -hmm. how am I going to do all that? Mm -hmm. And so the best thing I ever did was I erased absolutely everything on that board okay. and I left it blank for a week. Good for you. Wow. So after that point, I went back and instead of writing out all the ideas again, I just wrote down what was the one thing that needed to be done that day. If there was nothing that day, then what was the week? What was the one thing that needed to be done that week? Okay. And wow. how did you have that breakthrough? Is it just, just one morning you woke up and said, fuck it, I'm resigning today, <laughs> you know, and let's start this. How, how did it happen? What was your breakthrough moment? Uh, yeah. So I had like three or four days where I would wake up with the rah, rah. And then by like 15 minutes later, I was like, oh, I can't do it. I don't think yeah. I can do it. Oh yeah. You chickened out, eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So again, defaulting back to the people that were holding the vision for me, right? The yes. person that showed up right when I needed them to the coach that was there that said, Hey, I see you. You're fantastic. Why don't you see that in yourself? Yeah. Somebody yeah. saying those words to me, it sounds so simple, but they just, broke me to tears, right? Like nobody had ever really believed in me. So how wow. do you believe in yourself? That's so true, of course. Yeah. So I remember the day where I sent the message to say, hey, um, you know, I need to sit down and talk to you, to my team leader, because I wanted to give my notice in person. And um, so I set the date and I don't know if they knew what it was that was coming or not. Cause I'd like built it up in my head to this like big, <laughs> dun, 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 right? Like, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> And so the day I sent the message, I was sitting in a hallway during a training still. I was still going through my certifications. I wasn't even 100% done what I thought I needed to you know, be in this business. And um, I had my friend who had become my coach, become my mentor, who didn't even realize she meant that much to me at the time. She saw me with my phone and I'm like trying to write this message and then like thinking and then you know, in the back and forth. And she literally grabbed my phone and she said, what do you want to say? And I said it and she sent that message. <laughs> wow. So she did it for so you. So she did it for you. She literally hit that button for me because I was so on the fence about it. And wow. um, yeah, sometimes you need that hard love. It's true though. Yeah. You need somebody to make to, you to just that, you extra that extra push, push off to the do cliff. It. So yeah, you jump. So you know? you, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. We are our own greatness sometimes, right? Like you, yes. you look at your wife there and you see how amazing and beautiful she is, right? But 
Sometimes we don't remember that until somebody says it again. Yep, absolutely. That's true. Or we take it for granted, you know. Mm -hmm. We forget to tell each other sometimes, even like us in a relationship sometimes. Hey, you're very beautiful today. Or, you know, I really Mm -hmm. love you. You take it for granted that they know, but then, you know, they forget that you think that every day Mm -hmm. (laughs) because you don't see it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, okay. So you make that move and let's talk about who, like, what's your expertise? So we're going to narrow it down to what you do in your practice. So you deal with self-sabotaging thoughts uh, and anxiety and well, I'll let you explain. Yes. So I uh, teach people how to conquer their fear. Yes. And fear is not about I'm going to now jump off of a cliffside and I'm courageous and I have no fear. That's not the kind of fear I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the stuff that feels so anxious to do that it is stopping you from achieving your goals, having a great relationship, you know, deciding to get married or have a baby or start a business, the things that stop you from making decisions, Mm -hmm. that is the worst kind of fear that exists in this world today. Yep. So true. So I help people conquer their fear through um, really utilizing their unconscious mind. The stuff that you don't know is there so that we can bubble it up to the surface and identify it. But then instead of using it to say, hey, I've got this problem here. Okay, I know it now, but it's still there. We tweak it to actually um, be something that we can use. So where I used to think I had, you know, this fear of talking to people and I could never be on stage. There's no way, like I would tell myself over and over again this. I turned that into what is it that I'm actually thinking about? Why am I even thinking about I'm afraid to do this? If I'm afraid to do this, then it matters to me. Well, why does it matter to me, right? Mm -hmm. Because if I were to say right now, well, I'm afraid of rhinos, okay, rhinoceroses. Well, I haven't ever thought about that in my life because it doesn't matter to me. I'm I'm not going to be in the Serengeti, you know, being chased by a rhinoceros. So I don't think about it. But what is the thought that comes to mind that you're most afraid to do? That is where the gold is. So we find that gold nugget because sometimes we have no idea it's there. Yeah. All we know is something doesn't feel good. And then we pull it out and we amplify it, right? So we make it bright and shiny and we create magic. So magic can be, uh, you know, business that you're really wanting to start. Magic can be in your current role, not even necessarily self-employed. What can you pull out of that life to make it more fulfilling? What about relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Is there something that is being held back in your relationship because there's the same argument that comes up over and over again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's little indicators that we often don't see. So uh, my programs are, I've got, you know, workshops. I do one-on-one work. I am a quantum change process practitioner as well. That very first session I did that completely changed my life. I had to learn how to do it, right? Like I, I couldn't keep that a secret. And um, that's one of the most near and dear things to my heart that I help people to understand what's holding them back and to release all of that stuff from the past. Okay. That's amazing. And in your experience, is there something that as humans you see repetitively, like uh, that people have that prevents yeah. them from moving forward? From, like, uh, yes, fear of or the unknown. Conquering or, their yeah, fear. or conquering their fear. Like what's coming more, like what comes up more yes, often? Yes. From you see a certain pa- a same pattern with every individual that you see. Yeah. So over and over and over again, there is fear of judgment. Wow. Yes. Fear of judgment being, I am afraid of what my partner will think. Oh. I am afraid of what my mom will think. My boss, no, the audience, I, whatever. It's, it's, yeah. it's honestly so evil because I have that exact yeah. same complex. I'm, I care so much about what people think about me and the judgment I'll get if I do this or I say this. Like, It's yeah. evil. <laughs> Seriously, this I completely agree. Yeah, we we need to kick at the curb, and it's not as easy as saying, "Well, think more positively." Okay, I know. Yeah. So why know. people fear judgment? Yeah, like, did you ever why? figure out why yeah. within like with your expertise? Yeah. So we have the there's different stages in life where we have our imprinting years, and then we have our developing years. So our imprinting years really are the formative years that are before age seven. And what's happening before age seven, it's not to say that everybody has this big traumatic event that has happened that I'm repressing the memories for and I need to figure that out. 
No, no, no. It doesn't have, some people it may be, right? But it doesn't have to be that. What happens in those years are important though. And they root in very, very heavily. And I, I like to talk about my own experiences because it's the yes. easiest for me to have client confidentiality because it is very, very important that I okay. keep that line of, yeah. um, you know, what clients go through in their sessions. But what came up for me in my initial uh, QCP session, quantum change process, is that I had believed every woman around me was weak. Really? I didn't know I believed this. I had no idea. I could really? have sat down and had a conversation, yeah, and had never told you that that's what my problem was. But what happened was the things that happened in my early childhood, the things that happened to my mother that I watched and uh, my sister go through as well, yes. they didn't necessarily happen to me, but that experience was imprinted on me. Wow. And the fear in those experiences were imprinted on me. So when I watched someone be belittled because they didn't do something right, mm -hmm. I started to believe I, nobody does anything right. How do you do anything right? Everything mm -hmm. I do is wrong. Mm -hmm. And it showed up as, well, I need to look perfect in order to take a picture. Well, I you know, need to sound perfect in order to make a phone call. And that's mm -hmm. how it started showing up in, in my life. And ultimately, more and more, these sessions keep going back to just feeling good enough. Mm -hmm. So was that pressure you were feeling from your dad being either a perfectionist or maybe too hard on your mom and sister, perhaps? Yeah. So it was kind of an interesting circle that happened within my family because we have, you know, my parents both had quite traumatic lives. They really had a lot of stuff that happened to both of them in their early years. And I didn't realize any of that. We were a very secretive family okay. because it was the generation of, well, yes. why would you tell your kids that these horrible things have happened to you, right? I agree. Yeah. So they bottled it up. It was never dealt with. And instead my dad had a lot of rage okay, and a lot of anger that wasn't dealt with from what he had gone through True. in his life. That was his own, his own life trap, his own issue, right? His way of it coming forward mm -hmm. and you know, being a really talented man musically, but never really reaching a level of success there because of a million different things, choices, mm -hmm. but also things that were not his choice. Mm -hmm. And that rooting into me that you know, hey, recognition is important here, but you don't get it. So strive for recognition, but never get it so that you feel like you weren't good enough to get it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of one of the big rules that my dad taught me without realizing that he was teaching me that. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom, you know, she, she really, <laughs> she really tried her best in the situation that we were in. But what happened was she felt that she couldn't speak up to say something's wrong here a lot of the time. Okay. And that taught me, you know, you don't speak up when there's a problem. No. Right. You just take it and you know, you don't say anything. And my sister with everything that she's gone through in her life, um, tried to show up as someone that had it all under control because she didn't know any other way to keep it together. And that came out in little bits and pieces in our relationship as her becoming my motherly figure. So her you know, feeling like she had to protect me and I didn't know that was the case. I didn't know what was going on for her that she was actually protecting me from legitimate, big, horrible, scary things. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know she was trying to put that forward onto me to make sure it wasn't happening to me. And instead it came through as, you know, hey, why don't you do your hair this way? Or why don't you wear makeup when I was only, you know, 12 years old? And it mm -hmm. came in those kind of ways when she just didn't realize that it was causing me to feel like, well, I'm not pretty then. Yeah. Well, right? Yes. Wow. Okay. So those are the imprinting stages Just of your life. Zero to seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those are the really important years. And that's what we do in QCP is we really kind of dive into the earlier years um, okay. through a, a really unique process that allows for me to go into uh, muscle memory. Okay. So muscle memory is where the unconscious mind holds every experience, every thought, every feeling attached to those experiences and thoughts in the body somewhere, not in the brain, right? Somewhere throughout our cellular memory, which is our unconscious part of us. And they're there sometimes to be triggered. And uh, unless the initial event um, is dealt with, then those feelings are dealt with around that event, then there is no progress. It's a loop of continual patterns that Very, show yep. up 
Yeah, in it's so many different ways for people. So you yeah. talked about the development uh, stage too. So development stage would be, I guess, past seven years old. So you take everything, you integrate it as a sponge like yourself. You're a little sponge looking at everything that's happening and believing this and believing that. So what, what happens in the development stages? Yeah, all- so then we actually take what we've learned or what we've unintentionally learned yeah. and we turn it into a process of who we are. Okay. So we're developing the beliefs, the habits, um, you know, the skills that we have and not even necessarily, you know, I'm not talking about work skills, yeah. right? But showing up in life skills. Okay. Well, I've learned that in order to be loved by a family member, I need to X, Y, Z, whatever it is that happened. We all imprint something from our family members, good or bad. It does happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And whatever we've decided and stored in our unconscious mind that that's what it is, then we start creating that in our developing years. So Mm -hmm. for me, it was moving out on my own so that I could actually feel like I was in a safe environment and try to, you know, get ahead by getting a job. Mm -hmm. Well, instead I got a job that put me in a role where I was belittled because I had to feed the old lie that, Hey, you're not good enough to be here on your Mm -hmm. own. Go back to where you belong. And you don't know it's running until the jackhammer comes, right? And life falls out from underneath you. Okay. And we wanted to talk together. We talked about talking about self-sabotaging. Yes. So how do people self-sabotage their success, their performance, or either just their life in general? Yeah, great question. So self-sabotage, the first thing that comes to mind for someone is different for everybody. But what I have found often is People think it's this big thing that causes catastrophic instant results. So self-sabotage for some, when you say the word actually comes to self-harm, right? That's how that plays out. But it's the little things that really add up over time. That is the focus of the really debilitating self-sabotage. And that's number one, starting with the thoughts, right? The thoughts that have happened, and then those turn into a way that you feel. So if you tell yourself every single day, that and unintentionally, right? Like we, we think a million thoughts a day. So these things are running in the background. I'm, for example, as a young one telling myself, well, you know, you don't deserve to be here. You need to go back to where you came from. Well, then my feeling isn't going to be good. It's going to be maybe anxiety that pops up for me, feeling nervous around people, right? Yes, of course. Well, that behavior then, or that feeling rather translates into the behavior of, well, I need to avoid situations where I'm going to feel uncomfortable. That way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then the avoidance is the very first thing and biggest thing that happens with people of self-sabotage. This is a huge, huge problem in our society. We avoid what doesn't feel good. Mm-hmm. We avoid conversations. We avoid saying yes to opportunities. Yep. There, the list goes on and on. Avoidance is one of the biggest ways that self-sabotage shows up in life. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. Yeah. So we want to talk to you about anxiety. What is anxiety? Why do people have anxiety and how do you overcome anxiety? Mm -hmm. So when you think about anxiety, the very first thing that happens is if we kind of go and take it back is a a thought that pops up first, right? So you have the initial thought, whatever it's about, and then what happens next? So there's a very specific thing that happens in all of our minds that we don't realize and that is the disaster film. So maybe it's showing up to an event that you're gonna have to speak on or or, you you be on camera, it's an interview for, right? Okay, the thought pops in my mind, hmm, I'd like to do that. But then what is the sequence of events that you're imagining happening that- All shit. Oh, all shit and all (laughs) negative, right? That you're gonna suck, it's gonna gonna be be awful, (laughs) they're gonna think all these awful things about you, like it's nothing positive. Yeah. yeah. It, and it's so instant, right? It, it's, yes. it's, also, it's hilarious, really, how instant it is for us to do these things. So what's happening is instead of, say, you showing up to that event and it going however horribly wrong we've imagined it being, okay, instead of that happening physically, you've now experienced it a million times over and over again on a loop all the way up until the point when maybe you're going to show up to that. And Physiologically, it is causing a stress reaction that is releasing hormones in the body and you are experiencing, you know, failure or judgment or whatever it is over and over and over again on a loop, whether you do that event or not. Maybe you said no, but the disaster film still ran long enough 
-hmm. That anxiety set in and it's all about fear. What was the fear of? Mm -hmm. There is something attached to the end of that line. Anxiety is fear yep. of failure in advance. Yes, the fear of the unknown or the, uh, or yes. Fear of failure in advance. That's a great way no, to put it, anxiety. Yeah, it's so true. So yeah. we're all guilty of that. How in your experience could someone master or conquer or either improve their control over yes, that control. anxiety and that's yes. all from because the mindset. Because I don't so think that can, you can switch that off right away, right? No. Like, yeah, like it, it does take some effort. And you know, I know because I've been through this myself and it's not that I will never have thoughts that make me feel a little bit anxious. It's just when they come up, I can dissipate them. Right? Oh, yes. So, Tell us how. Yeah. <laughs> so Don't give us all your help. secrets, but maybe a few. Yeah, a few. A few. <laughs> There's so many more. There's so okay. many more. This is just all right, bring them on. <laughs> yeah. So visualization is the absolute best place to start. And there have been a lot of really fascinating studies about how visualization really helps to create muscle memory. Okay, so muscle memory, think about that word that I talked about. Well, we've got things stored in our muscle memory, right? Mm -hmm. So we're wanting to actually override the things that are there that we're worried about. And studies have shown, they've used this for athletes more, uh, most specifically, is that when they are visualizing doing the performance, right? So maybe it's an Olympic event and they know that they got one shot at this. Oh, if yeah. they get the best time, that's it. Yeah. There's no reuse, right? Yeah. So that can cause a lot of anxiety for anybody at any uh, of time, course, right? absolutely. So what people have done is they have a coach that will walk them through how to properly visualize. And this is not about, okay, well, I think I want to win. Well, yeah, we, you know, we all want to succeed and win, but how are we infusing all of our cells with hmm. that information? So it can remember it at the moment when we need to apply it. Oh. Okay. Okay. So this helps with performance. Again, going back to why I specialize in performance, allowing yourself to show up the okay. way that you want to, right? Okay. So visualization allows for you to, in advance, experience that event successfully rather than the disaster film. Amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how do you and overcome this disaster film that will try to show up? In ah. your so the way that the mind works, we have to try and narrow in information to focus, right? To be able to grab onto an idea, you have to, the mind naturally does this process where it, it filters out information, it deletes, it distorts, it generalizes, it just naturally has to. It can't focus on everything at once. So the same is true for anxiety and disaster films. If you do not want the disaster film, you need to give your brain something else to focus on so it can delete all of that information that you don't want to be there, right? Okay. And so this is done through repetitiveness. The very first time that I used this technique, what I'll do is I'll walk you through a mini exercise. Does that? Sure, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes it. exactly, it'd be wonderful. Okay, so we'll do that. The, I'll give you an example of when this worked for me in my life. The first time I used it was something very, very small. I was having a lot of anxiety about my dogs being outside. Okay, wow. so. They, yeah, and uh, this was years ago where I have uh, two outside dogs. We lived on like a farm setting. They were outside at night and they were honestly living like the best life, but I was so fearful for them. Yeah. And it, I mean, we didn't have children. So I think I was kind of, you know, transferring my maybe motherly. You know, she does that with I, our dogs. I, we have dogs too. I'm the exact same way if I understand you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it comes up. I'm afraid of them. I'm thinking at night there's coyotes. There's like, I don't know what they're doing. And these dogs were like 50 times bigger than coyotes. So it wasn't even, you know, really? issue, but yeah. you think these thoughts. And so I was not sleeping was the end result. I didn't sleep ever. And I started using this visualization technique right before I went to bed because your brain waves at that time are the most malleable to be able to soak in the information and really repeat it. So when you're sleeping, it's running because it's mm. the last thing you gave your mind. Mm. Okay? So what I would do is I'll walk you through it. I would close my eyes. I would do this process. And I'm telling you for, it was about two years that I was really struggling with not being able to sleep because I would jump out of bed, run outside and think that they were whatever they were, I was making up at the time and it was never happening, but it allowed me to sleep and this worked in like less than a week. Oh. I, I, I haven't done it since. I am not fearful for them. Uh, it's been years since, since that occurred, but it really, really works. So, ready? Amazing. Yeah, yes, ready. 
Okay, so what I'm going to have you do in a moment, I'm going to have you close your eyes and I'm going to okay. walk everybody who's listening um, yep. through this and you can use this for whatever event or conversation, whatever's coming up that you feel anxious about. But what I want to direct you to is one specific thing for this moment, okay? So close your eyes here and I'm going to direct you through this. What we're going to do first before we start is we want to kind of relax our breathing, allow our cells to really just calm down from the conversation we're having. And I want you to take a deep breath in through the nose, in through the nose, and out through the mouth. Blow it like a straw, out through the mouth. Good. Let's do that one more time. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Releasing all that tension. Good. And what I want you to do now is imagine the thing that you are feeling anxious about. What are you worrying about? What comes to mind? And when you have that moment, what I want you to do is decide what you want to happen instead. Okay, so what is it that you really want to happen instead of what has been running? And I want you to imagine that you're there. Maybe it's an event, maybe it's a conversation, whatever it is, as you're looking through your own eyes here, imagine where you are. What's around you? What's important? Are you sitting? Are you standing? Is there any music that's there? How do you feel? Who's around you? Is there anything that you smell? I want you to really bring it to vivid color. Imagine exactly where you are and what's actually happening. What do you see? Imagine it being a movie that you're watching this play out in the best possible way. I want you to really amplify it. So maybe you're standing on stage and everybody is clapping and it's the most amazing experience you've ever had. They're throwing roses at you at this point because it is so phenomenal. Really blow it up into vivid color. Do you have it? Are you there? Yes. <laughs> Good. Okay. And stay with it for a moment and you can feel what it feels like. I want you to lock that moment in. Good. Okay, and I want you to just come back to now when you're ready. Just open your eyes when you're ready and come back to me now. We're here. Excellent. Okay, so awesome. that's the mini version. So what you want to do is you want to do that for one minute straight. Set okay. a timer. The first time you do this, what you're worried about, imagine what it is you want to happen instead and think about that in vivid color in through your own eyes imagine how it feels right the feelings important the thoughts are important around what you're seeing is there smells really immerse yourself in what that situation is and run that movie for one minute okay amazing we'll do that and uh, it really works Rep repetitiveness is key so when i have a really big on stage something that i need to do you better believe even still after years i am doing this every single night for a week before i am going to bed with my one minute movie really blown out about how fantastic it's going to be and make wow. it silly right because we yeah. like to, yeah. to latch on to things that are, are fun and enjoyable right yes make absolutely it way more blown out than even it might be it'll allow you to remember that in that moment i've done this and i've done this well so you're programming that Cut. success, that story, that movie leading yeah. to the event Event's. so that when you're there, you already played it a, like a you million played that times movie or whatever. And it, the outcome was positive yeah. instead of negative, right? Your program. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Study was, uh, alone, your body does not know the difference. So whatever your mind is thinking, yeah. it doesn't yeah. know if it has actually experienced that or not. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. If you're telling yourself that this is how it's going to go because I'm thinking of the worst case scenario instead, well, guess what? You're programming yourself to really make the actions towards only if the worst case scenario is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So if that doesn't happen, and let's be honest, most times that worst case scenario doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Now all you've practiced for is how it's going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. So of course you're going to be extra nervous because it's not happening even that way. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. I think it was, uh, I've, well, I saw, you know, uh, Tony Robbins, you know, obviously who he is, he's a big, big time coach. And what he did, I, I think in this story, cause I'm reading his book every day, he would, he had anxiety, obviously building everything that he built it's a crazy empire nowadays, but, mm -hmm. um, he would look in the mirror and just hype himself up that he's yes. good enough, that he has confidence, that yes. he's able to speak to an audience yep. and he would do it so repetitively believing and it, putting believing into in. his mind that he's this great speaker, even though he had. He didn't know anything about it. He was building himself up, and, you know, and he did it so often. He said that at some point, it's just, it became who I was. I was, I really believed it and played it so many times that I built confidence without having confidence. I built an image without having that image. He created it himself. And he says that 
it comes down to what you're saying, Same. visualization and playing a positive outcome um, repetitively will most likely lead to it or at least improve greatly your chances of improve achieving. your anxiety at least, right? Yeah. Or the, the negative. Yeah, yeah. and wow. I mean, really, it's free, right? Yes. It's yes. one minute. Yes. Yeah. So and then you might think you're a narcissist or something. I'm so good. I'm great. <laughs> Whatever. But <laughs> it does work. Like your job too, right? Like yeah. believing that you are so great is okay. Yeah. Like, yes. It's okay. I because so. most people who have those thoughts about, well, you know, that, that's kind of egotistical to, to feel that way. Those are the people that need to tell themselves more often how great you are. They are. Yeah. Yeah. True. You wouldn't have that thought to think, hey, this is a little bit selfish right now if I'm thinking this. If you didn't already have your ego under control. <laughs> okay? well, it comes down yeah. to what you were saying. Why are you thinking that fear of judgment? You fear yeah. what others would think of you if they would see you say, I'm so good. I'm great. I can achieve anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because you're conditioning yourself for success. Mm -hmm. And Got it. Yeah. So, awesome. yeah. So in your practice, what's your, your biggest success story? Like not, without talking about client, like who? Did you, you know, whatever y you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I had, um, a client that actually had a unbelievable debilitating thing that was happening on from, uh, being in the womb as like at birth. My that God. They didn't what? That yeah, far. They, yeah. So there's stuff that can show up. Think about when you're in your mother's womb, yeah. you yeah. are alive, you're there, you're, you know, you're getting information from what your mother is experiencing. What? And if something has happened that was significant for the mother, those feelings are being felt by the child. Are they stored Stop in his it. body? Yes. Like and does it stay? Memory? Does it stay with their yes. <laughs> yes. So this Whoa. is where, That's insane. I'm telling you the biggest shift happened in this person's life yeah. within days and weeks after this session and this information came to light and literally they had to go back and ask like, well, what was actually happening at this time to confirm and have that convincer of this huge aha has happened in this session for me. And it was all confirmed by the parent that not exactly, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not psychic. I can't tell exactly what the events were, but yeah, yeah, yeah what was coming through based on what was going on in the process of the session. And as that happened, it allowed for the emotions to be understood, the pattern to be presented and why the pattern was presenting and how it was causing the block that was showing up by not being able to say yes to certain things by feeling like everything was um, just, it didn't matter the decision that was being made, it would be the wrong decision. So if that's running, then of course you're going to gear your actions towards making the wrong decision. Cause that's all you believe you can do. Hmm. Yeah. So discovering what had happened in the womb. Um, I've had a few clients that we've gone back into that particular area of life, but this particular person was absolutely life changing what happened in their life after that. And like, I wish I could share all of the details. Oh, amazing. Yeah, of course. I know, but you can't. Yeah. That's yeah, it's amazing. That is. That's wow. crazy. And what about the opposite? What can you kind of say was a big, like a big challenge for you personally, maybe dealing with somebody because you don't always, you won't always have that amazing connection with everybody you meet, yeah. or maybe there might be barriers, right? And getting that rapport. Um, what was that biggest challenge for you? Uh, yeah. Well, what tends to show up as a coach is we're human, right? So the one thing that you might be worried about is the one thing that you will attract into your business. So we can get a handle on our unconscious things that are presenting. And so for me, it's not that I've necessarily had this kind of client show up that was really a tough, tough one. But what has happened is other people that have come from other coaches that run in the same line of work that were not able to work with that client because they knew they were running something similar. So perhaps, for example, oh. alcoholism, you know, in the family, maybe. Yes the coach has ever dealt with that particular issue with a family member, it's going to be a lot of the times really tough to maybe deal with that particular issue showing up in a client because we superimpose our feelings onto situations as well, right? Is that a yeah. trigger point or, you know, Hey, my dad was an alcoholic. If, if that was what it was, then all of a sudden, if you're treating an alcoholic, then does that cause some sort of emotion if it's not dealt with to pop up? Mm -hmm. So oftentimes in, in my network of community uh, practitioners, what we do is, you know, we assess based on what the issue is, knowing that 
that is something that may be a trigger or not. And it's not to say that if I've had issues in my life, I can't deal with somebody who's had those issues. Most times I'm the best person for that. Exactly. I've worked through a hundred percent of what is attached to that issue. Mm-hmm. All of the layers, right? Yes. So um, I've had cases where it's best to refer out initially because it's not my area of um, expertise mm-hmm. and vice versa. I've had clients come in where another practitioner has said, you know, I am not comfortable working on this particular issue and, you know, I, I'm too close to it. So it, it works well if you can have that network of people that trust their inner guidance on mm-hmm. that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And what have you learned uh, the most about yourself doing this? Oh, goodness. I have, I'm just, I love that question because I am blown away at what people learn about themselves and myself yeah. included. Yeah. I By learned, talking to others too. Yeah. Yeah. I have learned that the things that I thought that I wanted to do in life were there for a reason. So maybe it's like when I was little, I wanted to be a singer. It wasn't. Okay. I actually wanted to be a singer. I really didn't want to be the superstar person on stage. I didn't really, I have a decent voice, but I don't have a superstar voice by any means. Mm -hmm. And I thought for a long time that I wanted to be that, but I'm not that. So therefore I'm a failure, right? Because why do I want something that I can't be? Mm -hmm. Well, what I've learned through my entire journey so far is that that was a breadcrumb. I loved the idea of being a singer because it was feeding me information that I would pick up on when I was in my thirties. And that information was that I'm actually really good on stage, not singing, yes. on stage, but I love talking on stage. Yes. Okay. And I wouldn't have Amazing. grabbed onto that unless I had remembered there was something I loved about this. It wasn't a failure. It was a redirect. Yes. Hmm. Amazing. So you, you're really good at turning every single experience you ever had in your life into something positive. Mm-hmm. Well, at this point. At uh, this point now, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, years ago, not so much, but it keeps evolving, right? Like I have challenges that pop up in my life and I have challenges that pop up with family members, but it's just about how do you deal with the challenge? Just hard stuff, bad stuff, sad stuff happens. Um, that's life, but what do we take from it that I was responsible for in that moment? What did this have to do with me? Why did I need this experience? Um, or was I there just for that person in that moment for that experience? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to Katie's five tips, let's go with maybe five tips for a strong mindset. Um, what would you say would, well, maybe you have less than that, whatever, but, uh, what would be your tips for a strong mindset on a day to day basis that people can bring up into their life? Yeah. Great question. So number one would definitely be, uh, don't believe that you know everything, right? Always be open to learning, no matter how high you are on the list of expertise in your field, there is always something to learn. Be willing to learn something, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. do is to have that repetitiveness, right? So we learn a new habit only by after doing it for 21 days in a row. Mm -hmm. So we're giving up on things too quickly because they're hard. Yes, they're hard. They're meant to be hard because you haven't done it before. You're creating a muscle memory. Stick with it. 21 days. Remember the 21 days. Keep your repetitiveness on that. And the most important things to be repetitive on are the thoughts you say to yourself. So if you find that challenging or it feels corny, right? To tell yourself that, hey, you know, I'm great. I deserve this. Think of one thing that you wish somebody said to you at your darkest hour. What was the one thing? And you'll know, like quick thoughts will come to you. What's the one thing you needed to hear when you were having a hard time, right? Think of that one thing and write it down, but put that everywhere you can see it. Write it on your mirror in your bathroom. Put it on a sticky note where you can see it in your car. Put it as a reminder note on your phone. Like just put it anywhere that you can see it so that you can actually read to yourself every single day. That one thing that you needed to hear. It's programming something else. Um, The next thing is your morning routine. Like I know we've heard this a million times. Morning routine is really important. Mm -hmm. But morning routine doesn't have to be I do all of the things that, you know, my coach has said for me to do. Morning routine is more about what's the one thing you know that makes you feel best in the day that you can start off with. A for me, <laughs> <laughs> for me I, I'm not one that I get up right away and I'm straight into my workout routine and then I'm meditating. And then I'm, like, I'm, I'm such a night person that. Me too. Oh, Us we, too, we are Emma. night persons. Oh. Yeah. Ah, 
So my morning routine is not super morning oriented. It's After kind of like, <laughs> yeah, it shows up a little later in the day, but that's okay. What is it that is your kickoff, right? Mm -hmm. Do you need to have something that happens for you that makes you feel good about the rest of the events that are going to happen for the day? Mm. So that would be my, my top ones. Amazing. Great. So if we talk about um, your, your practice, what are the clients that come to you so that people that are listening right now can see this as being a good fit for them uh, mm. in terms of reaching out to you? Yeah, so my clients are often people that um, full confidentiality with people that I work with. So oftentimes there's a lot of people that don't realize who my clients are. And it's because sometimes they are people that are actually doing very, fairly well in life on the surface. And they don't necessarily want people to know that they're struggling inside, right? Yeah. So it doesn't mean that all of a sudden your life is completely in the gutter and you know, you're losing your home and you've lost your job and now I feel like I need a coach. It doesn't mean that. Sometimes that's the case. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's someone who is having some sort of financial success, who is having, you know, some of the things happening in life that they're wanting to have, but it just doesn't feel good. They're, okay. they're not feeling fulfilled, right? They're not feeling like this is checking all the boxes. This is all that there is sometimes is what comes oh. up. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a great, great answer. Yeah, yeah, it is. So it could be basically anybody. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good fit for anyone. So you have a, an amazing workshop com coming up that's free. It's called Conquer Your Fear. Um, it's supposed to be released uh, this, this week. This afternoon, you said, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. We will have and, the link for everyone here. Okay, so we're going to put the link down in the description. And um, would that will that be accessible at any point in time if they miss on it? They can check it out next week and a week and a month or... Yeah, so for now, um, just because we're in launch, this so this program yeah. um, it used to be a in-person live interaction um, that I was running for the first year of my business. It's a very, very high impact session that has really great reviews and I wanted to bring it to more people. So yeah. with social, social distancing and COVID and everything happening yeah. right now, it was super tough to say, let's get a group together. And it just like, it's not possible, but everyone was asking, when are you doing Conquer Your Fear? So it will be available on the link. Um, what you'll do is you'll click in to register for your spot. You will receive the workshop via um, online. It's a virtual event. Okay. It's only about an hour and 15 minutes of your time. We work through specific exercises. There's a lot of takeaways for you in there. And it will be available to rewatch so you can, you know, do that again at another time or if you have to go back to it. And uh, at some point, though, there will be a, a timer put on it. But for now, I'm going to keep it open to, to have the replay as often as you need. Great. So is this a great introduction to the full course? Um, that's yes. the so I've got several other programs that, um, you know, different varying degrees of what someone is, is at in life, whatever stage you're at. This is definitely a good starting point. You're going to get some really, really good tangible tips that you can take away in your life and uh, share with your family members as well. Yes, absolutely. Great. Amazing. And you seem like you're a girl who's really into self-development. And would you have any books that you recommend that you've read? Because I believe, or I actually think that you might be reading a lot. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, I, so I audiobook a lot too, right? Because oh, that's yes. safe time saver. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love the audiobooks. Uh, you know what I just read for the second time recently was Girl, Wash Your Face, which okay. is right okay. Yeah, she, well, what I love about this book is every chapter is dedicated to the lie that she used to tell herself. So there's wow. a different lie every time and it's all about self-sabotaging talks, right? What are we saying to ourselves, and how does it show up? So there's, I don't know how many chapters, I think 14 chapters, but a lot of good scenarios that are real life tangible things that have happened. It's almost like short stories. So if you're not a huge reader, you can pick up any chapter in the book and get a lot of value just off of popping in for that moment. Okay. And, um, I have to share one more with you is the, yes, heard of this one is kind of a little bit more on the out there scale, but it is so phenomenal. It's called many lives, many masters. Okay. No, never heard of it. And of course the author is leaving me, Dr. Weiss. Um, I can't remember his, it's W E I S S I believe. I think he's a psychotherapist. Um, nice. Might have been a psychiatrist. I think it's psychotherapist. And so he, this is a story that he has written. It's a true accounting. It's got transcripts in it of his work that he's done through hypnotherapy, 
with wow. one particular client who was so debilitated with anxiety that her life was an, an absolute shambles, like in, in every area. And he couldn't seem to really make any progress with her through his conventional medical therapy. Mm -hmm. And he ended up going into hypnosis sessions with her. And I'm telling you, like, it's, it's mind blowing what happened. It's a true story. And he's a doctor. So there's a lot of scientific stuff kind of behind it. And um, it, what happened for her to be able to hear a lot of her anxiety is, I'm not even going to give you it away. Okay. okay. That's, but that's something that's something to to read yeah for sure well, i love reading so that's yes. why i wanted to know the books that you're into at the moment or the ones that you would suggest yeah. and um, you said that you're a well you've done a hypnotherapist course or yeah. you're into hypnosis um do you mix all those services into your practice do you yeah. use a bits and pieces of what you learned and integrate it all into your own style Absolutely. So that's the beauty of this work. I've got a lot of different tools that I pull in. Sometimes it's completely different for one person versus the next. Um, I'm certified with the American Board of Hypnotherapy and oh, I bring wow. oftentimes hypnosis into my meditations. Okay. So I do full release meditations that are built around cycles of life and I tie in some of the quantum change process into the meditations as well. And we just, uh, like you said, weave it all in and, and do what yeah. works. Amazing. Okay, great. Amazing. Well, uh, before we let you go, we want to thank you so much for being yes, on the thank podcast. You. Yeah. Uh, this is really awesome that you're dedicating some of your time to, you know, uh, having this reach and instructing mm -hmm. more of our audience absolutely. about different, even your tips, like they're yes, very valuable. Absolutely. And, and you're very impressive. Good yeah. for you. You know, uh, you're, you're an impressive story. And mm -hmm. seriously, congrats, because yes. you're, you're one of a few or many now that tries to make it and you made it, or it seems like you're doing very well for yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, before we let you go, is there anything else you would like to add or you would like to say to our audience in terms? Mm -hmm. Well, number one, thank you guys so much because whether you realize it or not, you have amazing energy and sometimes Thanks. that's hard to come through on a, like a video broadcast. Right? I agree. You're, you're definitely doing what you should be doing. You're in the right spot. Keep going. I love it. And I'm, I'm just so grateful to be a part of the process with you too. And um, so for everyone else that's out there, yeah. follow what is feeling good right now, right? Really pay attention to something that is exciting you. There is something there for you. Uh, Elizabeth Gilbert is another book, Big Magic. If you okay. haven't put that one up yet, she talks about why an idea has come to you that it, it's not for nothing. If that idea has found you for a reason mm -hmm. and it, don't grab onto it, then it is going to find somebody else. Huh. Very true. So trust your intuition. Yes. 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 Well, trust you're here for a reason. Yes. Trust you heard these words for a reason. There's something yes. that's There's... To you. I agree. Yes. Yeah. And this is where we plug you in with uh, your website. So, yes. Um, www.katyromaniolo. But yeah, I'll, I'll put it on. .com. <laughs> I'll write it down for people. So it'll be in the description. So you can just click on it and go check Katie out and her work and her website and whatever she offers. There's a few programs there that I've seen too that you offer. So um, yeah. how do like how do people know which program to go through or they would? Yeah, well, I do discovery calls. So, you know, Conquer Your Fear is always the best place to start because yeah. it allows for you to really understand more about how your mind is working okay. and what is it that you're afraid of. Um, book a discovery call. I have an option there for you to just, you know, click in and, and have a 15 minute conversation with me directly okay. to say what's, what's coming up. I've had, you know, even uh, reoccurring nightmares somebody had inquired about and wow. uh, what is that 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 would be for me and that's a great question and uh, yes the answer is yes <laughs> I can help you with that I'm so it's very unique check out the website check out the um the free workshop first and uh yeah we'll we'll go from there yeah okay, you seem like perfect. you're an awesome toolbox of many services uh, yes, so it's absolutely yeah, I'm sure anybody can find a fit in your practice yep, for whatever they I struggle agree. with so Thank you. All right, guys, thank you so much. Check out Katie Romaniolo. I got it right. <laughs> Romaniolo, go. I got it right this, this time. And thanks for being on the podcast. Yeah, we'll send you. you all the links and everything to this interview. And thanks a lot. Have a beautiful day. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye.